This is my day. This is my daily bread. Your very word. I request for you to take your notes notes out because what you're about to do is going to be a big blessing to you and myself. So the joy of the Lord, put your hands together for Mrs. Nelly Odwell. Give her a beautiful hand clap, a very wonderful old Saints Cathedral. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. And I it's always awesome to be back in this service. I'm lost Full of energy. You. The worship is just awesome. Indeed, the Lord is moving in this place. Let's pray. Our precious and loving Father, this afternoon, Lord, we come before your throne of mercy, thanking you for opportunities such as this. We thank you, Lord, for your word that is coming forth. Find me a worthy vessel to be used of you, O Lord. May your word come out clear. May your people hear you clearly. May their hearts be receptive. May they hear you, because that is their desire. May they leave this place blessed, for we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, as you've heard, my name is Nelly. I love the Lord as my personal savior. For those who are new, who, who are the, coming here for the first time, I'm married um, to one fine person, man of God, Reverend John Mark. We've got two, two children, two girls. And indeed, um, I'm privileged to, to bring forth the Lord's word this morning or this afternoon as per se. I also want to thank the provost and his team, the worship minister, for also inviting me to bring forth this powerful message on spiritual warfare. Indeed, uh, this month we've been looking at the book of Ephesians, uh, especially this particular verses 10 to 20 about spiritual warfare. This particular morning, we are looking at things to put on. And we, we want to, to see how can we be prepared for the spiritual warfare? The Apostle Paul, when he was writing um, this epistle uh, to the Ephesians, um, the people in Eph Ephesus, he was imprisoned in Rome for two years. You can imagine being guarded by the soldier. The Roman soldiers were full of armor, you know, a full metal armor. And um, seeing these soldiers for two years must have made an impression on him. He saw the armor day in, day out, that he must have been quite acquainted. You can see from um, the, the picture on the um, overhead. He learned to understand the function of each piece, the purpose it served, and why it was important. So this morning, we just want to see how is this relevant? Because at some point, God must have inspired him. Um, an analogy in his mind, just as the Roman soldiers required physical armor, the, the Christians need spiritual armor to successfully fight our wars. Paul saw each piece of the Roman armor as a powerful correlation with our own spiritual defenses. We are in a spiritual warfare. We are fighting. But maybe some of you may be wondering, who are we fighting? Why do we need an armor? In Corinthians, the second Corinthians chapter four, verses eight to nine states, we are hard pressed on every side, yet we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we are not despairing. We may be persecuted, but we are not forsaken. We may be struck down, but not destroyed. But how will we do it? As Christians, we are expected to withstand incredible pressures and not be defeated. I'm sure those of you who have walked the Christian walk for a long time, the expectations are quite high, especially for young people today. But we are meant to walk on, pressing on towards the goal, because we'll get a crown at the end of it. But how can we stand up against everything the world has to throw at us? and still emerge victorious. Indeed, we want to be victorious in this journey, in this war. This we can't do for ourselves, but in a divine 
an unbeatable defense, which is the armor of God, it is possible. From Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 uh, to 20, we have seen, or rather we've read, there are seven pieces of armor, and I want us to go through them, each one of them. I'll be describing what the Roman soldier, it meant for the Roman soldier, and what it means for the Christian soldier who is on a spiritual warfare, its relationship and how we are going to put it on. So we start with the first one, the belt of truth that is buckled around your waist. The belt had this cupboard. You can see from the picture where the sword is, is, is hanging on the sheath. It must be held on a belt. So then the sword is his weapon. But the belt secured all other pieces of the armor. So you can imagine if he didn't have, he'd have to hold the sword himself. He has a javelin, he has a shield. So by having the belt, at least it's holding the sword. So for the Christian soldier, the truth is God's word. We should cleave to us as a belt cleaves to our body. Are you embracing God's word? As a belt goes round our waist, the truth must be bound around us and written in our hearts. For those who are wearing trousers, the men, the ladies, perhaps you have a belt. You can imagine if you remove your belt, your trousers will be hanging a bit. Maybe it's the in thing, the sagging, I don't know. When you're sagging, do you have a belt? I don't know. Um, but for people who have to go security checks where they require you to remove the, the belt because of the metal buckle, your trousers are most likely to fall down. So you can see the importance of actually a physical belt. But for a Christian, the belt, we've said, is a belt of truth buckled around your waist. God's word needs to be cleft to ourselves. The belt cleaves to our body. It goes round. It holds us. The truth must bound around us, and it must be written in your hearts. Our trust in God and his word must be solid, or else we'll find ourselves without a weapon. The God's word is our weapon. We need to know what we believe and why. For those who are Christians, do you know why you believe in God and why? I'm sure this week you must have heard about in the news about the story of the Atheists um, Association or Foundation where they want to petition the government to remove religious study in schools. Quite a scary thought. But for those who have been following actually news around the world, that's been done in the US, in Australia, in the Western world, they've removed, removed religious study. So you as a Christian family, you have to look for Christian-based schools. Others, most public schools in some of the states in the US have removed the issue of being taught religious in the name of freedom of religion. Why are you pushing religion into somebody's face if they don't need it? But we pray that will not go far. But you can imagine that is warfare, spiritual warfare, things that we need to fight. We need to know God's word so that we can fight and defend, um, and defend him, Lord, uh, our God, in terms of the word. The second piece of armor is the breastplate of righteousness. This is the central part of the soldier's armor because it's covering the front part, your heart, the lungs, the torso. These are basically, if you, if, of course, if your heart is not beating, you're dead. So it's quite um, an important piece of armor for the soldier. Righteousness is to do what is right in God's eyes. Are you doing what is right in God's eyes? Because the opposite of righteousness is sin, which leads to death. And death will be cut off from God's protection. So the sin will cut you off from God's protection. So once we put on the breastplate of righteousness, we must not remove it. So once you've accepted the Lord as your savior, it is a lifetime of action. It's a daily walk with the Lord. And when we do that, you'll find peace, quietness and assurance forever. I'm sure for those who accepted the Lord as their personal savior, the first time you did, you must have felt a load off your shoulders. I don't know whether you felt that peace. That is what 
the breastplate of righteousness does. Because you want to do what is right in God's eyes. What laws of God do you find yourself likely to compromise? We are living in a, an age where Christianity, people are taking it wishy-washy, um, very, you, you get away with small white lies. I'm sure you've heard, especially in this age of mobile phones, in Akuja, in Akuja, and that time somebody's in the house. Or even in Matatu, you're saying, Nikonyeri, and that time they're in Nairobi. You know, small white lies. Things you tell even your parents, small white lies as to where you are or why or, 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 what, or what you're doing. Immorality, compromising. Immorality is such a big issue these days. Um, and we're seeing that even in our workplaces, in our universities, it's so rife. Yesterday I was in a fellowship with uh, clergy wives and one of the ladies is a counselor in one of the universities and she's saying, it's so bad. People are hurting through this immorality. Young people falling for sin and sexual sin especially, and they get disappointed. And they have, they've been left alone and um, either now become pregnant or even getting uh, uh, sexual transmitted diseases or HIV AIDS. It's so rife. Issue of gays and lesbianism. Things that we're taking that, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's part of life now. We, we are taking them very lightly. That's what I'm trying to say. But we are compromising our faith in the Lord. And we need to know and remember, what are we doing right in God's eyes? So we can't expect the breastplate to stay secure, fastened, unless we remain true to God's commands. So we need to put on the breastplate of righteousness so that uh, we remain true to his commands. The third um, armor, piece of armor is the shoes of preparation of the gospel of peace. I know for everyone, I think everyone here came, came wearing a pair of shoes and you know why, why shoes are important. They allow us to step freely so that you're not feeling like you'll be step, step on a stone or, a, or thorns, but you don't have to worry about where you're, you're concentrating on where you're walking. So we need to concentrate on the battle at hand. As for a soldier, the Roman soldier wore shoes. So you can imagine if he was not wearing shoes, he'll not be concentrating on the battle at hand, and he'll, of course, be beaten by the enemy. For us, the shoes of the preparation of the gospel of, of peace for the Christian is that the good news of God's kingdom will be spread by God's church. You're the church. Romans 10 uh, verse 14 to 15 says, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring good news. The shoes show us to walk on rough terrain. They protect us without fear. You're walking without fear because you have a covering on your shoes. It is a covering. So the preparation of the gospel of peace allows us to walk through painful trials and tribulations of life without fear. I'm sure a few of you may be going through a trial, a tribulation. It could be a loss of work. Perhaps you, you've deferred school because of lack of fees and you're feeling you're, you're really going through a trying trying. But you need to think of someone who needs to hear the good news. If you're going through such a thing and you know a friend who's going through that, you need to comfort them and give them the hope that only comes from the gospel of peace. Painful trials are there, but that's the only way we can grow as Christians. The Lord didn't come that we may have an easy life, and that's what the gospel tells us. So we need to be prepared. And the only way to be prepared is to read and to arm yourself with the gospel of peace. Because we are blessed as peacemakers, for we'll be called the sons of God. The fourth part of um, the arm of God is the shield of faith. Um, the shield is a slightly carved. You can see the, the soldier holding it is that thing that he has on, um, out in front of him to protect him from arrows, the spears that will be thrown at him. For anyone who's ever watched some of those movies of, the, of that time, 
they use that to, 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 to protect them. There were also other big ones, which would even be quite heavy to hold. But this was an impressive line uh, of defense, guarding and deflecting the arrows or the spears that would be thrown at them. Faith, the shield of faith means that faith is an irrefutable truth. It involves a huge element of trust. A shield guards and deflects, you've seen the, from that picture that the, the, the shield will guard and deflect the arrows. And that's what we need. Our faith needs to protect us and guard us from the enemy, who is Satan. He's always ready and hurling his darts of fear, of doubt and worry. Have you seen so many in recent times, we've prayed and you've thought that the Lord is not listening to you. So you decide to look at other mediums could go to palm readers, or you go to the witch doctor, you know, because you're doubting that really God exists, or you're doubting that God is even hearing you or seeing you. So we need to protect ourselves and deflect those doubts, deflect those doubts, darts of fear, darts of doubt, darts of worry, because these darts will hurt us. If we let our shield of faith down, if you can imagine the, the soldier, if he puts down his shield, his body is now ready for attack. So when we stop believing in God, it, uh, who is in control? So we need to know that we need to put up our shield of faith so that we continue uh, allowing God to work in our lives. Let's not fear. Let's not worry. Let's not be anxious of anything because he has promised to 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 meet us at our points of need. He's working everything out for our good and we need to remind ourselves of God's promises. Are you familiar with God's promises? And that's why we're encouraging you to read the Bible. Remind yourself of God's promises. When you feel you're so perplexed and pushed, when you feel as if the world is just overwhelming and, and you just can't take it anymore, God's promises, there are so many in the Bible. They should be the ones that should encourage you that he indeed is listening to you, he's watching out for you, he knows what you're going through, and he'll not allow any more temptation to, that you can handle, any more that he can be able to handle. Because he's bigger than that problem that you're going through, and he's not forgotten you. So we need to continue trusting in him and having faith in him. And that's why we need to put up the shield of faith. Continue wearing that shield. The fifth part of the armor is a helmet of salvation. The helmet, you can see what he's wearing. And I think for those who've seen the Boda Bodas, with the, um, the motorcycle Boda Bodas, wearing a helmet is for their protection. And you as a passenger, I don't know whether you usually ask for the helmet. It is the law that you need to wear a helmet um, because it protects your head in an event of an accident. Hopefully that um, we will be able to, to, to follow that law. But the helmet of salvation for a Christian is that salvation is deliverance of eternal death into God's kingdom. How many know the Lord as their personal savior? Because Satan hates that. We choose to be on that path of salvation. He will stop at nothing to destroy us. And that's why you find immediately you receive the Lord as a personal savior or get saved. You find so much attack and you start wondering, is this walk worth it? But as long as you get mentored and indeed protected and learn God's word, because it will be able to be, protect your thoughts from the enemy's attacks and temptations to disobey God. The helmet is vital for it protects the head, which is vulnerable to fatal blows. Even the ones who are boxing, I'm sure you've seen boxers, they always have also a helmet, because you can imagine as they're receiving blows, they, they, if they didn't have the helmet, it would be much more detrimental to their health. So we need to work our own salvation. 
with fear and trembling. And that's what Philippians 2.12 tells us. Work your own salvation with fear and trembling. There are many that are being, you know, um, you're finding that uh, you've been saved, but you're receiving a lot of uh, pressure from either your family, your friends who are not saved, why are you saved, pressure at work perhaps because you're insisting on meditations and prayer and, or Bible study. Press on, my sister and brother, press on. Because indeed, you wear the helmet of salvation so that others could be saved. We are called individually to be responsible for whether or not we choose to accept the invitation into God's kingdom or staying on the path of, of obedience with his help. So we need to make a choice. Are you going to put on the helmet of salvation so that we remain on the path of obedience with his help? Because like I said, it's not an easy journey. We can only do that by his help. We are only saved by his grace. It's not because we do good things or we are so good, because we are prone to sinning, but we need to remain on that obedience. Because even when we fall, he'll pick us up. He'll lift us up and protect us and guide us continuously. The sixth part of the armor is the sword of the spirit, the word of God. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The sword, as you could see from that picture, is that it, it's a means of attack. But you can imagine the sword is something that you, you're attacking something or somebody who's very close. You can imagine you can't use, because um, the sword is for close combat. And the only way um, that we can fight closely is to walk with God closely. God's word illuminates or shines and reveals to us the good and the bad, the wise and the unwise. We can be destroyed by lack of knowledge of God. In Hosea 4, 6, that's what it says. But we can be blessed if we hear and keep the word of God. So you can imagine, as like I said with the sword, he, when the soldier was using the sword, it had to be with a close enemy. So when you're surrounded with the enemy, you need the closest weapon, and that is the words, God's word, to discern the truth and to follow it. And the only way we can discern the truth is if we read the Bible every day, regularly. That's the only way you keep connected with the Holy Spirit who reveals his word. The word, the sword, needs to be sharpened if it's remain useful. Have you ever cut meat with a blunt knife? Is it easy? You know, it's very hard. And, and it's the same thing with a sword. If it's not sharp and you're attacking something, it will not serve the purpose. In fact, if it's an animal you're killing, it most likely may now kill you. The sword needs to be sharpened. And the only way we can sharpen our sword as a spiritual, Christian spiritual warfare is to read God's word regularly. Set time aside every day for regular Bible study. And I think the provost um, keeps uh, saying that and reminding us even with the theme of, um, of this church this year, growing to maturity. And I'm sure he must have mentioned this at the beginning of the year, where he was saying that we need to be a Bible reading church. For those who are new in this church, we need to read the Bible and know it and learn it and discern what the, Lord's, what the Lord's word is telling us. What is God telling us each and every day? The Bible may have been written more than 2,000 years ago, but it's still relevant today. We are seeing a lot of attack. We are seeing a lot of spiritual warfare, whether it's the Al-Shabaab, whether it's insecurity. A lot of things that were already for, uh, prophesied. The, the, those are the tough days that will come, drought, all those things. We need to, to be careful and be ready because um, the end is nigh. So we need to be reading the Bible, growing into maturity so that we can be able to spread the gospel of Christ. The sword of the living God is able to cut through every defense Satan can rise. 
And the only way we can rise against Satan is to know the word of God. I don't know how many of you are reading through the Bible the year, you know, the, um, what you, reading the Bible in one year. There are different ways that you can read it, or you can even use the chronology in terms of how events started off um, in, in the Bible days. So it, you choose our day. You choose uh, whichever method you'll need to do. And that way you remain connected to the word. If we are able to fight our battles from a distance, we would never experience an actual trial. Because without trials, there is no growth. And that's the, the, the theme that we are looking at, growing to maturity. If you're not going through trial, how can you be, how can you grow? Because how can you get answers from the Lord and to know that indeed you have a testimony, I went through this, but the Lord saw me, th saw me through it. Trials may be uncomfortable. You may be going through trials in one way or the other. It could be a lost job. It could be a loss of a loved one. It could be so many things, but these are essential as, as a journey, in our journey as Christians. Um, because even as we've read in Matthew 5.10, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You could be persecuted as a Christian as, as in, um, in college or, or even at home. You could be persecuted. You may be going through trials. And I know of families where one person is the only one who knows the Lord and the others don't. And it's so difficult for them. But as long as they remain true to God, he will come to see them. I've seen testimonies of people who've continually prayed for everyone to get saved in their families or, and they finally go through. But it's not an easy journey. Trials are expected. They can be uncomfortable, but they are essential for our journey as Christians. The last uh, piece of armor is the, the power of prayer and supplication in the spirit. Prayer. I don't know whether the soldiers, the Roman soldiers prayed, but for Paul, he prayed while he was in prison. And that is what we need to equip ourselves with God's armor. We must also be determined to keep a steady line in connection with him. How is your prayer life? Is it regular? Do you pray on Sunday just when you come to church and the, it serves you the whole week until you come next Sunday? Or do you set time every day to talk to your God? He's the commander of this spiritual army, remember. And he alone knows how to lead it to victory because we are victorious. As Christians, we are fighting a Christian battle and we want to win it victoriously. But we need to listen to the commander. For any army, they have, for any army to succeed, they have to listen to a commander, isn't it? So for the spiritual army, our commander is the Lord. So we need to listen to him. And how do we listen to him? It's the only time when we talk to him, when we are praying, when you're searching. Why, why are you allowing me to go through these trials? Or thanking him. I like the, one of the praise songs where we were thanking God. That opportunity to give thanks. Are you thankful to be alive today? Are you thankful for the situation you are in? Are you thankful for your family? Be thankful. Be thankful for the things that the Lord, because don't take it for granted. We need to have a life of thanksgiving. A life of giving honor where it is due. Supplication is a petition or a special request of God. You may be going through a trying time and you're wondering why, like Job in the, in the Old Testament, he must have wondered what he did to God. But he continued remaining steadfast in the Lord. So whatever you're going through, many people have gone through it. But as long as you look unto the Lord for answers, to give you peace, to give you the strength to take on the trial and tribulation that you're going through. He will see you through. The Spirit makes intercession for us because God knows our hearts by living in us. Have you accepted the Lord as your personal savior? Because that's the only way you can be able to fight this spiritual warfare that Christians have been called to. 
So you need to set time each day to talk to God. Because if we fail to establish a steady relationship with God, we will not be proper, we will not be in the proper mind, uh, mindset to be praying always, nor will we be in the proper mindset to win a spiritual affair. A war is as, war, is as good as um, won when you have put on the full armor. If you don't have the weapon, if you don't have the protective to deflect all those arrows and, and spears and uh, javelins, then you'll not be able to win the war. So we need to put on the full armor of God. If we look at the, um, the Beatitudes that we read in Matthew, the Gospel according to Matthew, because you may be going through a tough time, you may be going through a trying time, maybe you're so hard pressed and perplexed and wondering why, but the Lord uh, Jesus Christ, when he was speaking to a multitude, he was telling them they are blessed. Do you feel blessed when you go through trials? Most likely not, but this is what the Lord says. You'll be blessed, blessed are those who are poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Can you imagine? If you're pure in spirit and you really seek the Lord, so yours will be the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Perhaps you've lost a loved one. But if you mourn, the Lord will comfort you and give you the peace to move on, difficult as it is. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. It's only for the gentle-minded that you'll inherit the earth. When you allow yourself to be in the Lord's presence. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Remember the, the breastplate of righteousness, what it meant? So that you protect your heart, because you need to protect your heart. Because if your heart is not beating, then you're most likely dead. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Are you having a pure heart? Or are you always vindictive or jealous or envious of other people? Have a pure heart, for you will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for will be called the Son of God. We've been told about the shoes which are preparing the gospel of peace. Because the shoes allow us to move and spread the word of God, which is the gospel of good news. So are you thinking of someone who needs to hear the good news? Because you'll be the blessed one because you're bringing peace um, unto earth. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. Like I say, because they're, they're, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You could be persecuted for one reason or the other. Could be at work where your boss doesn't seem to be seeing anything that you're doing. Or perhaps even the boss is asking you for sexual favors. You're feeling persecuted. Don't relent. Just pray. Remember that indeed, uh, the prayer of a fervent, um, uh, righteous man, that it will be had. It, the Lord will hear you. Blessed are you when people insult you, they persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of Christ. Most likely, Perhaps you're going through that. But we are told to rejoice and be glad because the reward is great in heaven. Because there are many who are persecuted for um, the prophets that went before you. Like I said, it's not only you who's going through these things and don't feel like you're the only one who's um, feeling persecuted and pressed against everything. So in conclusion, so in this great spiritual war, whose side are you on? If you're still dead in your transgressions and sins, you are unknowingly under Satan's control. Serving him and in rebellion against God, you are at war with God, if you didn't know. If by faith in Christ Jesus you acknowledge your sin and trust in the victory which Jesus has already won on the cross, then you shall be saved. In which case, we shall wage war for God. Okay? You can see the difference. Because those who fight with God and those who fight for him, 
is there's a great difference. So whose side are you on in the spiritual war? Are you waging war for God or are you fighting with God? We're in great danger. Not when the enemy is great and powerful, but when we think we can stand in our own strength. And I know a number of people think that they can do things in their own strength. They don't see God working in their lives, bringing them this far. When you were born, for you to survive up to now, it's the Lord who has allowed that. Perhaps you think, no, my parents fed me well, I went to good schools, I'm alive now, so I'm doing things in my own strength. You have a good job, I'm doing things in my own strength. You're successful in your own business, it's my own strength. But the Lord is allowing you to do that. We need to see God in our lives. We need to acknowledge God. Be thankful for who you are. Are you thankful every morning when you wake up that you're well? There are people who wake up and they can't get out of bed. The others who don't even see the next day. Be grateful each and every day. And I like that chorus that we sang. Are you grateful for who you are and what the Lord is doing in your, in your lives? Don't take it for granted. For those who are living very far from their parents, do you call them? Are you thankful for them? Even through the struggles that you may have gone through, even as a, growing up in their homes, be thankful. There are some who didn't have parents. So when we think we're doing things in our own strength, rather than the strength which God provides, we are in danger. Peter learned this lesson the hard way when we look at Luke 22, 31 to 34. But Paul warns each Christian about the danger of self-confidence. So let's be wary of being self-confident, but know that we are on a spiritual welfare. But remember, Put on the full armor of God, the seven parts, in readiness of spiritual warfare, for we as Christians are facing today. I'll remind you what the seven are. The first one was the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Second is the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of preparation of gospel of peace. Tell somebody the gospel of peace. We are in Lent. We are about to celebrate Easter. Have you brought somebody to Christ? I'm hoping somebody who doesn't know Christ today will be able to meet him personally. The fourth one is the shield of faith. Don't lose faith. Put up your shield. Don't, don't leave yourself unguarded. Put it up. The helmet of salvation. Guard yourself with God's word. So get saved. If you do not, if you've not been able, uh, if you don't met the Lord in a personal way, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, arm yourself with the Word, with the, the Lord's Word. The seventh and last one is the power of prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Pray always. Pray. Connect with God. Just the way you talk with your parents or somebody or a guardian when you talk with them. Communication is important for those who. In, who are living at home or even your friends. You can imagine if you're sitting next to somebody and you're not talking. We're not mind readers. You need to conversate and talk. And that thing with our commander in chief, uh, our Lord, we need to be constant. How will we know the battle? Where is he sending you? How will we know the instructions he's giving you if we are not talking and being in constant communication with him? Power of prayer. And I know in the bulletins, this whole month of Lent, the, um, the cathedral uh, staff have been putting prayer points, prayer points, pray for each. This country is, is really, we are in a, in a time of warfare, just as Reverend Appella had said. We need to guard ourselves, pray. And the only way to get instructions for God is to constantly talk with him. Because he may be warning you not to go this way, and you, you're blindly going there. But we need to constantly hear him. And we just want to ask that we know each part of the arm of God and to uphold it. Because if one piece is down, then you're not fully covered. So we need to put on the full armor of God. In the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. 
Our precious and loving Father, this afternoon we just want to thank you for your word. We bless you because we just want to hear you as our commander in this spiritual warfare. Your people may be perplexed and pushed and crushed, but Lord, your word is promising us that, Father, you've not forsaken us. You're continually guiding us. Help us to continue putting our faith, uh, our shield up, and not to lose faith in you, Lord. For indeed, you will come through to us because the crown of, of, um, of a reward, we will expect it. Lord, we just want to ask that you be, remain with us and fill us afresh. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.